All right, well, the last time, as I said, we were together, we, uh, we talked about a character study. I mentioned to you that there is a difference between uh, doing a study of a character, a character which would be like uh, David or Joseph or other people like that, and then studying their character, studying the character of those characters. So uh, we want to talk more about this idea of studying those uh, those things, those characters. So I want you to open your Bible, if you would, to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And I think if you know your Bible, you know where I'm going with this. And uh, I hope you do. We want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. And as we think about these, uh, these things we can add to our lives, and we're going to mention... Uh, adding character to our lives. We're going to mention 2 Peter chapter 1, but we want to look at Galatians chapter 5 for just a moment. Galatians 5, uh, beginning in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now this is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. And in the fruit of the Spirit, we have these different things that we can work on. It's... it's uh, uh, the fruit, if you were, is, is uh, the manifestation of Christ working in your life on your behalf. Okay, So it's you growing in Christ's likeness, and we can grow in Christ's likeness in any one of these ways, and hopefully uh, we're growing in all of these ways at the same time. I mentioned to you last time we were together that some people, they want to just uh, pick one thing, and then they want to work on the one thing. Like, I need to be more loving. And then they get hung up on just loving, and they, they, they exclude the joy, the peace. They're loving, but, they're, but they have no joy. It's almost like a, a mandate from God, and they have to be loving. And they have no joy. Or maybe they, uh, they have faith, but, there's, but they have no goodness. Or maybe there is uh, meekness and, uh, and no temperance. Uh, maybe there's no gentleness, right? So we work on all of these things at the same time. These are good characteristics to add to your life. You should work on being more loving. You should work on having more joy and having more peace and, and being more long-suffering. But I just want to tell you real quickly, a little, uh, just a little secret, is, which it shouldn't be a secret, but unfortunately I, I feel that most people think it is, is that when you are abiding in Christ as you ought to be abiding, when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ that is, uh, that is, that is accurate, a, a right, accurate relationship in G- with Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is working in your life, these will, will come almost automatically because it's the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Now, you have to yield to the Holy Spirit as he's working, but... Uh, it's, it's kind of one of these, uh, it's a, kind of a dichotomy, right? It's you work on being loving, you want to be more loving. What can I do to work on being more loving? So we, we do a character study on those people in the Bible who are, who are, who are loving. And, and maybe we, we, we read the epistle of John and we see how a brother is supposed to love another brother and we work on that, we work on that brotherly love kind of thing. However, if you are abiding in the vine as you ought to be abiding and you are drawing nigh unto God, and he's drawing nigh unto you, and you are, you are literally walking in the Spirit. These things just kind of happen. So that's the secret. That really shouldn't be a secret. And there's a lot of people that put so much emphasis on trying so hard to work on, 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 a, on a specific character that they're not trying to conform their character to Christ's likeness. And when we conform our character to Christ's likeness, then we will just kind of be... Uh, transformed. And how are we transformed? Romans 12, by the renewing of our mind. So we, we be renewed in the mind, we're, we're growing in the spirit, we're yielding to God, and these, this fruit manifests itself. The closer you walk with the Lord, the more this fruit is evident in, 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 the lives, in your life to other people. So these are some good things. However, I, having said that, that doesn't mean don't work on them. It doesn't mean just, well, I'm just going to cast it all away, and I'm not, I don't care. 
I, I, all I'm going to do is just abide in the vine. And that's good. You should abide in the vine. But you also should care, and you also should work on these things in your life. And we are told to, to add things to our life. So turn over to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And beginning in verse... Uh, five. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience uh, godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and, and to brotherly kindness charity. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to keep adding positive things to our lives that are going to mold us into that that, uh, that Christ-likeness, okay? So, like I said, on one hand, on one hand, it's, it's, it's more of like uh, just yielding to God and allowing Him to create these things in you through, through the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, you want to work on them. And maybe you know people who have tried to just kind of isolate just one thing and they work on just one thing. And now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How many of you throughout your life has it been evidence in your own life that God is specifically working on one area in you. How many of you? Give me, give, me, give me an example. Give me an example of when you felt, hey, listen, for some reason, this is the fruit that God wants to produce in my life through me yielding to him. Give me an example. I'm going to write down some of these. Gracious speech. So when you say gentleness, tactfulness, how does that come across in your speech? Like, what is it about uh, what is it about tactful speech that's gentle? If you had two children, like I've got two children, if you were to, if you were to try to convey to them, you got to be gentle with your speech. You have to be gentle, gentleness. What, what, how, would you, how would you explain that to them? Like, like I want you guys... To be gentle in how you say what is it? How would you? How do you? How do you convey gentleness outside of just choice? So you got tone, you got volume. What else about it? Yeah, yeah, kind words. It's interesting. There's uh, there's other things too, like speed and punctuation, right? It's it's not just it's not just volume, but you can be gent. It's am it's amazing what what if, what uh, speed and and volume and tone and, and, and well-chosen words can do to be gentle. It's, it's, ama it's amazing how it comes across to be nice. At times, it's okay to be, to be somewhat animated, as long as the animation doesn't come across as not gentle. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Thank you. I, again, I, I appreciate that vulnerability because God works on me all the time to be gentle. And, and, and God, God works on, on, on me in, in, in every way you're going to say here. Uh, failure, failure is not bad in, in the sense that it, gets, it moves us into a situation where we can learn from that. I want to learn from failure. Listen, if you don't fail, you don't know what not to do. Right? So in a sense, now I would rather watch someone else fail and stand back and be like, I know why that didn't work. <laughs> you know, this is why he blew it. But for us, I think we have to have that failure. We have to have that time where we can analyze. Now, people who fail who don't analyze, it doesn't, it doesn't help them. But people who fail and say, wait a second, now that didn't work. Now why didn't that work? And, and, and how can I improve on it so it works next time? That's what I want to know. Let me start by saying a couple things. First of all, I want to get on these two books real quick and it'll help us to have more better character study. I think all of these are good. I think being more gracious, having more gracious speech, right? Let your speech be, be all the way with grace. I mean, that is so important. I mean, it's not sometimes. Um, I felt like just hanging up on this person who called me from the, the Times. I don't care where, anyway, and, 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 I, and, I, and I said what I wanted to say, <laughs> and it was kind of with some fun, but I was, asked the boys, I was very kind. I said, actually, I'm just, to be honest with you, I'm really just not interested, you know, in, in any, any newspaper or any blah, 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 blah. I felt like I was very, very kind. I could have been more kind. Did it all have to be said? No, uh, you know, a fool utter with all his mind. <laughs> so, there I was, being a fool. Okay, so anyway, um, gracious speech. But there was a keen awareness of it, a keen awareness of it, gentleness. H how, how did you become aware that you weren't gentle? So there's an awareness because you're able to read the Bible and say, this is what it shouldn't be, and so this is what it should be, right? So there was that, you were aware of that by virtue of Scripture. 
Let me get on to the crux of this, because I, I think this is really what boils down. The, the, that, that moment when you realized you failed, that I didn't do it like I should do it. I, I, I wasn't as gentle, as gracious. I, I wasn't as loving. Uh, I wasn't as, as, as gracious. Uh, I, was, I wasn't as, as positive, as negative, okay? The moment that you realize I failed, what happened spiritually? What was that one trigger like, this is why I didn't succeed? Here's the idea. When a person doesn't speak well, isn't as gracious as they should be, um, or as gentle as they should be, or, or is maybe is, is too self-righteous, or is too negative, or uh, it just not gracious. All of these things stem from a, a lack of allowing God to have preeminence. It, it, it's a lack of just allowing God to be in first place. It's what preeminence means. It means first place. It means number one. So it is that there are a lot of people who work really just, they work on trying to be more gracious. And there's nothing wrong. I think we need to be more gracious. I think we need to be more gentle. We're told to add these things to, you add, add these virtues to us, right? So it's, it's not a negative thing, but here's what I'm saying. If I could summarize anything, the whole idea about being spiritual is not, it's not a performance. It's not, and I know I'm not telling you anything, anything new, but I just want to reiterate, the, when, when we walk in the Spirit, we're going to be gentle, we're going to be gracious. We're not going to be self-righteous. We're going to be positive people. That doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that, that, uh, we don't, that there aren't times of, uh, of failure. And, but it's important to analyze that failure and say, why? Why did I fail? And when that, when, that, when that still small voice says in your mind, you weren't yielding to God. You took first place. You took first place in your pride. You took first place in your speech. You took first place because you're the man and you tell your wife what to do because, by golly, I'm married. Or I'm telling you what, I can be negative because everybody around me is negative and I'm taking first place here. When you don't yield to God and you go before him, uh, there's nothing but upset, nothing but problems. When you do a character study, when you study the character um, of the Bible, these things that we need to be adding to our life, I think it's incredibly important to work on those things. But it's not more important than working on conforming to the character of Christ's likeness. And the way you become more like him is, is through this uh, uh, yieldedness to him. That's the way you become like him. And, and if I can maybe, maybe liken it this way. A potter has a big lump of clay here on the, on the, on the pulpit. And uh, I'm going to be disappointed that he put it there because somebody's going to have to clean it. And uh, this potter has a big, this, all the soft clay, and he wants to conform this clay to his thumb. He pushes on the clay... The clay yields to his thumb and becomes conformed to it. Now, did this clay have anything else that it did outside of that, outside of yielding to the master? It really did. It just, it, 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 it made itself exactly like the image of the thumb. And if you've ever pushed on clay before, especially certain kinds of clay, you can even see uh, fingerprints, which I think is really amazing. It's not because the clay said, "Oh, I want to look like I want to look like a thumb, and I want to have I, I want to do this." That he said the, the clay just softens up, in a sense, and conforms. And there it is. There's the image of the thumb, and so is the clay, you and I, and we are conforming to Christ's likeness by just letting him have his way. I want God to have his way. I want God to have his way in my marriage. And I want God to have his way in my, in, 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 with my kids and with my finances. And if you do that and you bend to him, you'll be conformed to his image, just like that. Isn't that neat? To me, I, I think it's, maybe that's an oversimplification. But when I think about when I fail as a pastor, when I fail as a dad, when I fail as a husband, and I fail a lot, I realize that it's because I'm not yielding to God. 
And had I been yielding to God, I would have been conformed to his image, I would have been perfect in every way, and I wouldn't have these problems. Yieldedness, it's very, very important. When we do character study, there's a couple resources I want to share with you. Uh, two resources mainly, and, and you'll find these on a lot of bookcases, pastor's bookcases. I, I encourage you to get these. They're very simple, and I'm sure you've all heard of them, but uh, I'll say this for the sake of those that maybe haven't heard of them. Uh, this is a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. This is very, very important. I have one in, uh, in uh, a digital format on word search, which I spent a lot of money to get, but uh, very, very important. You, I mean, you basically uh, have a word, and you look up the word, and it comes in all of these. Uh, it's, alphabetic, it's alphabetical, and the word sorrowed. And if you want to look up uh, something about uh, sorrow, you can come in here and look up sorrow or songs, and it gives you all of, it's very, very small, it gives you all of the little itty-bitty print, the, the, the chapter and verse, and a small, in this case, a very small sentence. Very, very, very dangerous. Do you know why? It takes stuff out of context. Very, very, very good resource. I think a wrench is an amazing tool, but when you use it as a hammer, it doesn't work so well. I encourage everybody to have one of these. But don't let this do the work for you. Study to show yourself approved. Don't trust him. <laughs> you got to trust God and his illuminating your mind. I think it's very powerful, but it's also very dangerous. Very, very, very good. Um, another resource is good. This is Nave's Topical. Again, another reference. How many of you guys have heard of these? Raise your hands because I want to see. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I'm not speaking to... Good. So... Again, very, very, very powerful. You have a topic. You have a topic, and let's say uh, pride. This is good. I even have highlight. I've actually written all over this thing. So very, very good. You want it. You want it. You're struggling with pride. You can come in here and look up these characteristics, pride, and you say these are things that you do not want to add to. Uh, to your life, okay? You don't want to add pride, but it tells you a little bit about pride. Again, very, very, very good, very dangerous. Uh, in, this, uh, in this version, uh, it gives uh, uh, several verses surrounding it. You'll have less, uh, you know, problems with context. You'll have better contextual uh, understanding and less pollution from just something like the Strong's which would just give you just a, a little snippet, half a sentence with, its, with a bold. Uh, very, very, very good. If you're looking to do a character study, get these, get these references. And, and matter of fact, you will use these sort of uh, references your whole life. I use them all the time. Uh, where pastors and laymen get in trouble is when they, uh, when they do a search on the word pride. And there it is. There's a verse that says pride. They memorize it, but they don't know what it's talking about. And then they assume that it is what they think it means as opposed to actually what the context demands. It's context, context, context. You've got to have the right context, right? Uh, very, very, very important. Uh, so those two resources, I'm going to say something else, but it, it skipped my mind, and I know we're 10 minutes late already. So get those two resources and put them on your bookshelf, use them, uh, but do not abuse them. Don't let that do the work for you. Uh, whenever, whenever I'm reading, I have to read. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, the context I know surrounding already, you do this long enough, you've read a lot of the context numerous times, but I always have to refresh my memory. Okay, I want to make sure this isn't an error. Have I preached out of context before because I've used a Strong's Concordance and a Naves Topical? Yes. I'm not proud of it, but it happens. And it's because we don't put enough time in our study. And so when we do these character studies, make sure that you are, are deliberate about, about uh, you know, uncovering the real meaning of the passage. The word saved does not always mean saved going to heaven in the Bible. Uh, people are saved from a lot of stuff. It doesn't mean saved to something. It could mean saved from something. Very, very important. Very, very different. So use those to do your, to do your studies. Uh, I will conclude with that in a quick prayer. If anybody has any questions, we can talk about it next week. Again, we're actually 15 minutes over, and we'll talk about another uh, way to study your Bible next week. But yield 
to the Holy Spirit. Yield to him. Conforming to God's Christ, to, to the image of Christ, has everything to do with you yielding to the Holy Spirit.